Hey everybody, what's going on? Brett Mix here. Uh, first, I want to say I'm going to do a bad blood review and I will grade my predictions that I do in this video on my bad blood review, which should be up within a couple hours after the PLE event ends. Also want to say thank you to the subscribers as of late. I, my channel's been doing very well. Uh, I'm almost at 500 and if anybody else wants to help me get to that uh, milestone, I'd certainly appreciate it. I need about 20 more. For a channel that's only been on like three quarters of a year, I think that's pretty good. Uh, I really am blown away by the support. So thank you for that. So now let's get to Bad Blood. I have great memories with this pay-per-view event. No, it's a PLE now, but I have great memories for the pay-per-view because of Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker, that great Hell in a Cell match. Uh, Vince McMahon's, that's gotta be Kane! That's gotta be Kane! Can't really do his voice today, but you know Kane's debut. Uh, unfortunately, it was the same day as Brian Pillman's death. But looking at the actual pay-per-view, it was great. Um, not 2003 and 2004, not so much. You had Christian versus Booker T in an underwhelming IC title match where Booker T should have won in Houston, his own hometown. He lost. We had the Austin Bischoff redneck triathlon that didn't, you know, make anybody entertained. And then we had the tr Triple H, Kevin Nash, Hell in a Cell where Mick Foley was the ref and nothing, nothing noteworthy happened. Triple H just beat him up with weapons and Foley counted the three. Anyway... That, so there, those pay-per-views weren't very memorable, but now bringing back Bad Blood with Hell in a Cell, all of them featured a Hell in a Cell, which is why I'm glad that Triple H has brought this back. He's really into tradition. That's one thing I like about Paul Levesque's regime. Now, without further ado, there's five matches planned so far. So let's do the five-match prediction. We start off with... This is in no particular order, obviously, but we start off with Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Balor hasn't won many important matches in the last year, especially in singles competition. If you go back and look, I don't believe he's had a PLE victory in singles competition in years. This has been so. This has Priest winning written all over it because of how they've booked the characters. But if they want to make Judgment Day look strong, they need them to win here, even if it is by cheating. However. What needs to happen isn't always what does happen. So I'm sticking with my gut and sticking with Damian Priest as my prediction over Finn Balor. I think Balor would do more with the win, but I don't think that's what's happening here. I think Damian Priest is going to win, and the Judgment Day version 2.0 is going to continue to look a little bit weak. Speaking of that, Liv Morgan of that Judgment Day and Rhea Ripley. And another way the Judgment Day is going to kind of look weak because my pick should not shock anyone here. The belt, she never lost. Mummy is coming straight for it. I'm predicting Ripley. Probably to have another long title reign like the reign that she was going to have before she got injured. Um, Liv Morgan has done a believable and an admirable job as champion. It's just Rhea Ripley is just a step above. Dom, and speaking of above, Dom hanging above in the shark cage. Nice little segue there. Shark cage that should be add an interesting element to this match. Does he try to get down? Does somebody from the Judgment Day help him get down from that shark cage? Only time will tell. Either way, I'm going with Rhea Ripley. So those are two matches in a row where the Judgment Day 2-0 loses. So I don't know if that's going to happen, to be honest, now that I think about it. But those are still my picks, and I'm not going to change them. We got Solo, Sokoa, and Jacob Fatu against Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. People will say Roman can't lose his first match back. People will say the champion can't lose. But you know what? And I said earlier, what needs to happen isn't the same as what will happen. But in this case, I think what needs to happen will prevail. I think Solo and Fa 2 get the victory. The tag match should be good for the reasons alone that this match has so many twists and turns. It largely depends on... And if they could save face, uh, Roman and Cody could save face if somebody from the, the current Bloodline 2.0... Uh, if they get involved and screw them over or if it's KO or if it's the Usos helping Romans and they accidentally hit Roman it, you never know there's so many twists and turns in The Rock's future involvement it really matters what they have planned going into Wrestlemania and what they have planned going forward into the months leading into Wrestlemania for who gets the win here I really think that matters but I'm going to pick Solo and Fa 2 final decision and we got two more matches left. We had Jax and Bailey. Bailey, by all means, could add to her decorated resume. I just don't think she will here. They're teasing a Stratton turn on Jax, but does that mean that she costs her the title? I don't know. Or does it mean that she just cashes in on her? 
I don't know. Either way, I see Jax beating Bailey. The only question I have is what does Miss Stratton do? Triple H doesn't like to hot potato the title if unless it's somebody like with an injury like Rhea Ripley. Uh, so Jax winning is the most solid prediction on this whole event, in my opinion. So Jax over Bailey. I don't want that to happen, but that's what I feel will happen. CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. No idea what big spot or what finish could possibly come from all this. All I know is CM Punk needs this more than anything. His character is losing steam and believability and he needs a big W for his return's sake and just for credibility. He's been back a year and he's had a lot of bad luck. Some of that may be for karma for what he said about the WWE when he was gone. But I'm rooting for him. He's a changed guy. I really feel that. I really hope the WWE does the right thing and gives Punk the victory. However it, hap however, it happens is a mystery, but I just hope it happens. Drew had the last laugh. Let Punk have this one. I see Punk winning. Does Rollins get involved and accidentally screw over McIntyre while both are outside the cell? Or does it lead to a three-way feud between the three? One can only ponder the possibilities. All I know is Drew and Seth both don't like Punk. And it's, it's pretty obvious that Seth is going to go into a program with Punk leading to WrestleMania. But how it happens, we shall find out. So my pick here is CM Punk. So those are my picks, and again, we'll see how I do in the Bad Blood review that I put up a couple hours after the show. Thank you for watching this prediction slash preview video. Hit like and subscribe, and I'll be around with you for the next one. For Macho Wrestling 101, I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.